I hope everyone has had a good sleep after last night, feeling fresh. I'll start with building BDD in Enterprise. Don't uh, mix it up with BDT because we are going to talk about implementation of product as well. I'm uh, Alexander Meshkov, working in the uh, home credit bank test team, and I've been uh, attending this conference for many years now to share my experience. So we are going to talk about behavior-driven development. We'll cover what this process is, what role it plays in development. We'll cover some common mistakes one may encounter when uh, an enterprise transitions to this process. And uh, when this process uh, is built from ground up, it's not always effective. So what is BDD? As I said, this is behavioral driven development. So creating a product or making a change based on behavior of the system. So first we see how system behaves and then we start writing user stories and so on. This is a fairly modern process and it's spun out of two previous processes, event-driven development, one of a, on the business side and the other on the technical side. The former implies that the entire organization is divided into certain domains like cards, credits, then it's uh, divided into subdomains, issuance of cards and so on, and further down, test-driven development. Who knows about test-driven development? This is a development via testing. So first you do unit testing and then uh, you design software code. The second component in BDD is uh, Gherkin language. Everybody is familiar with it, so I'm not going to elaborate on it. I just want to say that Gherkin is machine-readable language or description of a document, a test, which uses key words such as when or if, then, and some steps that our system should perform. I'm not going to dwell upon it. Let's move on. So, why QA can be a change driver in an organization and why in BDD testing has a key role to play. First of all, BDD builds itself upon user stories and they remind us a lot of our tests. Without BDD, without automation process, generating BDD in the form that we wanted to bring benefits is fairly is fairly difficult. Therefore, BDD is all about quality and about speed. At the end of presentation, we'll look at side-by-side -side comparison with BDD and without, and uh, you decide whether it is worthwhile implementing. The title of my presentation is uh, BDD in an Enterprise. When we talk about small teams, let's say 10 men strong, it's fairly easy to 
change processes inside the team. You can get together and uh, start anew. But when we talk about an enterprise, enterprise is a fairly big organization with a lot of systems, typically banks or large IT corporations, telecommunication companies or oil companies. So they feature a lot of uh, systems. So to create or replace a process, uh, we need to modify five, six subsystems, and each system could be a separate command or separate process that live independently. Here is an example of that. We have backend, we have storage, we have microservices, uh, various data processing systems, big data, about 50 systems, and just as many commands that support the system. So what did it all start with? It all started a year and a half ago when our organization belatedly decided to switch to microservice architecture. So we had to change the architecture. To change it, it wasn't enough to change the architecture per se. We had to change processes. We used to live in a conventional semi-cascade model with agile commands. Uh, but the main processes operated in a cascade format. So we modified architecture, but we still existed in the cascade model. To change it and to start reducing time to market and be able to compete with others, we decided to speed up processes by refusing documentation and uh, adhering to user stories first, and uh, secondly, by moving up some of the testing processes. So 18 months ago, we realized that we need to write auto tests that would check against our tasks. This is how a classical test pyramid looks, and this is how it looked in our case. So it was the opposite picture. We had a lot of manual testing, GUI tests, API test kind of existed, but nobody took it seriously. So when we first tried to write tests by the end of development, we failed because the tests that we wrote were not stable. They crashed. So actually we continued with uh, manual testing and the degree of uh, mistrust to auto-testing only exacerbated. We lacked level of maturity in automation and we didn't have amassed automation in background. Also, we divide into business analysis and system analysis. We still did large tasks, and while testers studied terms of reference, then uh, uh, translated those into Gherkin language and automated those, it took a long time. 
and we needed everyone to be involved in the process, not just the testers. So we began contemplating building up the background. To build it up, we considered a solution that would universalize uh, the system because uh, we had a lot of subsystems and uh, writing its own framework is uh, very costly. And if you scale it up, it would uh, be a pretty penny. Also, there is a keyword-driven testing, which fits into BDT concept. Your auto tests are built on keywords that are generated uh, by auto test developers. And then from those building blocks, we put together a test. We decided that uh, such concept will allow us to quickly build automation process, increase background, and then quickly collect auto tests. But let's take a step back. We decided to determine a quality criterion. First, maintenance or supportability. Sometimes automated guys start to hardcore in the um, framework's core. They customize framework for themselves. I recommend that you look in different direction because the core stopped to update. For example, in Serenity environment, which we use. So the first criteria was to have supportability so that our framework could be easily updated in any version and that our drivers could be updated as well. Second criterion is user friendliness. Um, modification scalability, since we have a, a large fleet of systems, we need to have uh, scalability in place uh, to have smooth operation and performance or functionality. Most of the utilities that uh, we write for ourselves should cover the plethora of errors that we run into in automation. We have a solution supported by a separate R&D command, uh, and it's all done in one solution. Once we determined key criteria, we thought about uh, three key aspects for automation of testing. So we singled out command, technical solution and test optimization. Let's start with the command to uh, build up background. Each system or class of systems uh, had an agile driven command. These are planning, task setting. Each three weeks we could change the direction of automation sharply because in the backlog uh, scope uh, some issues come up with the uh, framework so we modify the work plan every week and there was a, if there was a big backlog we cleared it out gradually Secondly, we fixed the issue of attracting a manual tester in automation. Uh, we've run into this issue before. A manual tester was the customer for automation. So manual testers wrote Gherkin tests. And to motivate that, uh, we used uh, combat uh, launches 
and to see what bugs were in place. So these were the sub-processes how to fix the bug tests. Team leads were the entry point for the tests, and based on the classes of data, we tried to establish the team leads. However, we didn't have problems that the testers might think that automation testing leads to further development of their automation processes. Since we had automation from the very beginning, we just simply didn't have such a problem at all. An important thing is the test themselves. Manual testers are used to classical model, that is to expect the result at once. This model is not applicable for automation and has to be redone. We spent about two months to rewrite the regression model to fit the automation testing process. Otherwise, it would have been very difficult to automate the model. Manual testers could add several checks to one test and call each step differently, but all these things have to be standardized. So, in my opinion, a functional tester is responsible for this, not an automation tester. A technical solution which we developed could be described during the next presentation of Karina. She will be speaking in Section B. She will speak about technical implementation of this technical solution. In the end, we developed one single framework where all the utilized, the test codes and automation of API and UI were all driven into that framework, including the drivers. And the launches are now done with the support of the AutoHub uh, based on the cloud solutions. To be able to move further and having a technical solution in place, we started to accumulate the background. At the moment, we have more than 1,000 keywords written. Uh, the system front are covered at the rate of about 80% and about 70% of the backlogs and really saved a lot of time. That is around four hours. And this is because sometimes the regression tests that used to take us a couple of hours now took us around four days, including time for defects analysis, errors, correction, etc. I can tell you more about technical solution. Not actually me, my colleague can tell you more in another presentation, but I'll explain you how implementation went. How could you understand that you are ready for BDD? Well, you have a number of keywords that could be used for the regression automation. You're using Gherkin language by the testers and by the both manual testers and automation testers. From our side, we're trying that the functional testers also use Gherkin language to write from the very beginning to avoid further rewriting. Analytical tests and test analytics are being adapted to fit the automation testing. Functional testers perceive automation testing as their further development and the key process that is going to be implemented and further developed within our company. Therefore, if some of the mentioned key points are already available and listed, you can continue to move forward and scale up the BDD process. In our company, we did it in the following manner. In order for your team to be heard and to be familiar that such processes are available, you have to present a BDD. In your presentation, you have to say not only about what BDD is and what it is, and because otherwise you will have a lot of questions. You have to stress that it's much easier to work with documentation under the BDD. And the second important point is you have to select some pilot projects who will be working based on the BDD because the existing ones would not be willing to change their process for BDD. Afterwards, when the pilot project is successful, you can demonstrate the achieved benefits. We have many times tried to launch the BDD. We started 
from the analytics writing user cases in the Gherkin language. It turned out to be very complicated for the business. Product owners and business did not understand what Gherkin language is. For them, it was very difficult to read technical documentation. So even if it's written on paper. Then we started to communicate with them and uh, realized that for business, it is just enough to have a process flow diagram demonstrating how the process is organized. At the moment, all the tasks are defined in such a way that the teams come together, business comes together, and we draw the whole process. And we're trying to draw the whole process within the first two meetings. Then a system architect uh, joins the meetings and try to split the process into systems, defining integration points and uh, setting up the teams that will be responsible for a particular business process. In addition, he defines whether any additional microservices are to be developed or any subsystems are required for the process to become functional. This is a customer way or our office personal way that has to be gone through in order to understand. In the end, we have come to the stage where user story is to be developed. We use the classical language for the user stories. As a customer, I would like to send something to the bank and get something in the response. That's the language that the business used to define the steps of the process. Also, the business helped to develop functional and non-functional requirements to the processes. This helped us to find a bottlenecks and close down these bottlenecks because at the beginning, when we were developing in the Gherkin language, we could not find the other way around except for writing documents in the Gherkin language. In our case, business was allowed to report their requirements in any kind of format, in any kind of language. Our task was to formalize the requirements and turn them into user story and user cases and uh, turn into functional aspects while developing certain test scenarios. User story is later transformed into user case. Analytics use Gherkin language for writing user cases. This is something that we had missed in the past. They form key user cases that either a business person or our office personnel can go through. You see that the language applicable is quite standard. In this format, it is quite a standard and typical user case. The Gecko language further allows the testers to transform them into the required format for their work. It is true that this is much more labor efforts taken than simply write down technical documentation. It takes a lot of time and it requires a lot of procedures before approval is received for such test user cases. If for some reasons you wouldn't like to refuse having documentation in place, you will have to have this process in parallel. But later, when such scenarios are in place, sometimes analytics reject or do no longer need to have technical documentation, which gives a possibility to save labor resources. User cases are transformed into auto tests by a tester. System analytics starts to transform user cases into a kind of a task setting for developers, defining what will be the screen mode, what kind of interface has to be applied for a particular case. Testers set up the teams and testers who will take part in task solution. This could be both automation testers and functional testers. Then they split user stories among teams because each case requires different kind of expertise. Apart from working with the user cases, a tester is supposed to split the cases into system and defines what button has to be pressed, what fields have to be filled in. 
user cases are aligned with their services in terms of their integration. And the final stage of test analysis is extension of user cases through the checks, which a tester finds necessary to be able to perform the task and cover task implementation with test scenarios. Key words which had been accumulated before are of great support at this stage. Now we change the steps with the keywords. Thus, we can get almost 95% ready auto test since the keywords are already in place. You don't have to create them when you, they are already available. On top of the slide, you can see a single place where additional development from the automation tester is required to write down a new keyword to automate this particular step. I described you the process part of BDD process establishment, starting from the idea and until their development of full test. However, even if you introduce these kind of approaches, it doesn't necessarily mean that you will receive positive result. BDT process is also about lower test level coverage, such as API test automation and unit tests. Let's start with unit tests. It is not possible to start the BDD well without the working process well established because these two processes, TDD and BDD, are interrelated. They sometimes look very much the same. Well, TDD requires lower level of task description while BDD is characterized by a high one. But they're both characterized by a high level of automation. Initially comes the test this way or another. If there is no TDD, then a developer will provide you with potentially low quality code. We faced situation that sometimes the test simply failed because of a significant number of defects. Tests were not really results oriented because we had to look for additional logs, screenshots. We had to find errors and try to correct them. Another point is that since TDD process is a connection to a TDD, they do not exist without one another. And if your developers do not have a culture how to write a unit test, this culture has to be introduced and implemented. One more aspect which you may come across or face later is how to avoid UI checks if you decided to start using the API and the uh, system architecture. At the beginning, we didn't trust API tests. It was a risky step for us. I suggest that you start with front end because it's easier to define key business processes and their services, which could be covered by UI checks. Do the launches in parallel analyze the difference between the defects, what kind of defects are detected at the level of API and at the level of UI, and uh, try to take out the UI test from the scope of works in favor of API. In addition, I'll tell you more about the technical process of BDD. I'll bring several interesting examples. If we analyze role splits during BDD process, then we can see that the tester plays key role except for writing user story. The tester joined the process from the very beginning because it's important for him or for her to be able to write the user case test correctly. Secondly, he should be well informed in advance about different peculiarities about task tests that have to be designed at the stage of uh, solutions architecture. Another result that we received is a coverage matrix. This coverage matrix is at the moment 
being developed manually by a tester, but it helps us to identify and decide on the test scenarios, as well as to analyze whether the scenarios are covered by UI or API tests. We're also trying to apply all possible test development methodology, both services and microservices. This is needed to support a developer if a test fails. He is able to find a point where certain error correction or defects correction is needed. This really helps us during localization. It helps us to localize any defects or errors and it supports much faster workflow. Let's talk about the costs. This is a classical example of how behavior-driven development model is compared to a classical one. Quality doesn't significantly change. You can support the two level of quality by cost. The more you invest, the faster it will work and the higher quality your product will enjoy. This is the instrument to adjust quality. When applying behavior-driven development model, the cost for development increases, meaning the mandates course increase. However, we were not able to assess whether the quality improved or deteriorated because it was quite okay before and it remained the same. So the top slide demonstrates the cascade process as is. This took us around 30 days in total. The process to be took us around five days to implement, but since the whole test is on the left side and we're trying to automate the test process as much as possible and to cover them by auto tests, then the test time helps to reduce the duration of task implementation process. So let me now explain how come it's difficult in enterprise environment and I'll uh, recapitulate why it's easy for teams to switch to this. First of all, different units, a lot of uh, processes, various teams, hard to find a common language. Second, automation in backend is difficult, certain degree of red tape and the uh, duration of any process. This process is still ongoing in uh, my bank nearly a year and a half. So uh, BDD is about a uh, process of uh, product implementation. Without mature automation, BDD is hard to generate. And uh, it's not only testers, but the entire team should uh, be guided by uh, quality assurance. QA is not equivalent to testing. In other words, QA is a common effort, common responsibility. I think based on that, you will think again, uh, think twice if you need to switch to BDD or not. There are pros and cons. But um, the cost of projects is likely to increase in early stages until analytics uh, ceases to use um, paper documents. So again, bear in mind that you have to be mature enough. That's all I have. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you for an interesting presentation. You said that the bank's framework is supported by a test team. Or how does it work? Each team has a tester, automatic, and a manual tester assigned. We have an R&D team, which is uh, responsible. We have uh, classical developers auto testers and DevOps reps as well. So it's a mixed team with different functions. And each 
team that is split into automation classes. They have lead guys who hook up to the framework and use it in their work. If they need to uh, finalize uh, something, uh, they bear in mind that uh, someone else with a similar problem can come to them. So they try to come up with uh, uh, universal solutions. Should you have a lead in each team? I think yes. Does coverage help to um, reuse teams? I mean, there is the front and there is a test team and then another team, another business uh, on the horizon and then another team is going to kill off uh, the, the front from the previous project. Uh, the automation support team should be one team, only one team for the front end. This is done for microservices. We have a lot of microservices and we have only one support team uh, for auto tests. That team puts together IP tests for microservices, so, so it's like a standalone R&D team. What's the percentage uh, share in your bank that switched to this um, method? About 30 percent, to be honest. But not everything is tested as a classical process. We have a lot of subsidiary processes and uh, they don't really need that. They are not interested in speed because uh, this is for in-house development. They don't work with outside clients, so uh, speed is not relevant. Thank you for detailed but not tedious presentation. I don't think uh, that everyone can uh, skip BDT to BDD. How many tests? What's your f what is your feedback loop? Concerning building a pyramid, I think at the moment we have a rectangle. Uh, we try to increase the bottom coverage, so we're st it's still work in progress. Concerning how many auto tests we do, as for API tests, we have constraints. It's not the assembly that is launched, but a subsystem, and it takes uh, about 30 minutes for an API test to be completed. And whatever we have in UI go, goes during one hour for the front end. And if it's end to end for some transactions, it may take up to four hours. Coverage. Uh, do you um, count this uh, manually or by looking at the code? This is the coverage for the task. And in terms of uh, microservices, regression-wise, this is a separate process that is decided not only by us, because uh, we communicate uh, with the architect architects who know entry points and exit points plus for UI we talk to support guys they can feed us useful information that we didn't have in the coverage sort of a user script we don't like to meddle with the code each team has its own code and it's hard to read them all Thank you for your talk. 
often teams that switch to BDD run into a problem of a tester who does auto test, runs out of keywords, he puts it to automation and the deadline is not being met. How do you handle this? Our solution is simple. We automate regression as much as we can and uh, keywords are sufficient for regression. So new features are not covered with uh, auto tests. What is a new feature? It's an old process. You take regression script, change something, change a step, a new screen or window form is added. So you take the old script and uh, delete old steps and insert new steps. And here's a new test. All steps uh, prior to the check can be collected from old ones. Well, it's not exactly so. You still have to modify the formula. It depends. Uh, when it comes to um, payment uh, periods associated with uh, each bank, in uh, my bank, we use batch processes started automatically, and we don't even uh, get into that. We stay out of this. Our job uh, is to run automation tests when the right time comes. In other organizations, they use different payment periods and then they check if the procedure has been A-OK -okay for all processes. So concerning the closure and uh, payment operations, each bank or each enterprise, it's uh, bank specific. Bank specific. I cannot give you any tips. Time's up. So I guess uh,